This game's looking very, very evenly matched. These needles really do throw a wrench in things. These un called action light bringer combo. That's gonna be an interesting one. Um both of these decks are very scary. Um, I wonder in the first five, I wonder if Kyle will start an ice trap because of Jesse's abundance of two life units. Um, this should be, we'll see how it goes. Oh yeah, so J Jesse was true to saying, you know, he, he didn't really think about this, Kyle did. Kyle was coming out with the immediate plan first five and Jesse's going to think this through a bit. Two shadows. I think that's a that's a good plan. We think Kai is gonna come out with. I doubt he starts with a golden veil now, right? He probably wants all three golden veils in his deck for um when he gets massive growth online or whenever he gets the hydro to be rather large. Um so I think he would rather value the golden veils in his deck. Um that one extra in the deck than trying to come out early round one. I think he could play it relatively safe, like a Sonic Swordsman, um, Bear, Gilder, Lightbringer. Bear, Gilder, Lightbringer seems to be a gimme there. Um, so that's what, five, six, an Ice Trap, um, seven, and a Sonic Swordsman. Yeah, that, so I think, I think that makes sense. Bear, Gilder, Lightbringer, Sonic Swordsman, Ice Trap. Um, he could take a hit um, on his round one um, with using the Sonic Swordsman um, from a, you know, two shadows or a sort of virtue. But I think the Ice Trap will buy him back some dice efficiency there. Oh, man, is that bolt? How many massive growths does he run? He runs two massive growths, and zero polarity mage. So massive bears are done. Massive hydras are done. Um, that's a really bad meditation. But he does keep his golden veils in his deck. He does keep his sort of virtues. I'm not sure if he wants three kneels in his deck, anyways. Um, but those massive growths hit hurt. And then here comes Jesse meditating meteor, molten gold, and hydra. A sh nice shiny molten gold at that. We got a Gilder and uh, and Kaya's side. Um, they both have Frostback there, and then Jesse just played a Wing Lioness. Um, I wonder how I feel about Wing Lioness in this matchup. Um, maybe it could take off the unit guard on Gilder, but I, I don't know. Um, Wing Linus has been going out of favor for me. What do, what other spe ready spells? I think I would go Griffin and Butterfly Monk, to be quite honest. Wing Linus seems like an odd pick. Here's Kaya slamming down the Swordsman. And Jesse answering with a bear. That's a good answer with a bear. The Swordsman can't get a quick attack on either the bear or the lioness because Enter the Fray can just finish it off um, without a need to use a removal spell. So if he takes that two damage, then he's in a good spot. Kai with the early pass, which is smart, right? He doesn't want to reveal his options. And frankly, he already has five dice spent to Jesse's three. Yeah, this does put Jesse in an odd spot because it seems like Jesse's going to go more reactive this round. Um, but we'll see how this goes. I still, we, we have three dice that he needs to spend on board. And three dice to spend in hand.
All right, so it looks like Jesse can go double knight, and he kind of telegraphed that, or not double knight, but he can go hammer knight. And it looks like he telegraphed that a bit by pulling that dice back, unless he's really good at mind games. Did the um timer go up from 70 minutes this season? I I don't recall. Um, Maybe he accidentally picked it different. Was it 70? I don't remember. I thought it was 70. It looks higher. Um, Yeah, Clue, yeah. I, I, maybe you just accidentally hit something else. Yeah, Jesse's starting the flake reflection. It's a good start. And now you get to mark the swordsman. It's a very risky under the fray there. Um, He has a golden veil, but you really don't want to spend a golden veil on a enter the fray. Um, If he does golden veil and enter a fray, Odette will not take any damage. So... That was um that was a risky enter the fray there, but I, I get it, right? You don't want the lioness to hit the swordsman and be able to enter the fray of the swordsman. I wonder if the issue is just starting the swordsman too early. Right? He it really gives Jesse the the really the opportunity to play more reactive here. And in this kind of mirror match, I think the old death that plays reactive is a, a tiny bit of an advantage. Except that or, yeah. And even better than Ender the Fray, training the Winged Lioness. So he looks like he values his life over having that two-attack body. Um, that's a very strong trade, very strong trade, right? He got two damage and exhausted Odette while trading three dice for three dice, right? The Fate, the fate Reflection and three for Winged Lioness to the three for Sonic Swordsman while exhausted and, and dealing two damage. So. Excellent trade adjust for Jesse, and it really puts him in the driver's seat. Huge play. I, and then coming out with the hammer knight. So if he, if Jess, if um, Kaya did start some removal, he's going to leave a card in hand. And he did start removal. I'm not sure Jesse's mad about that. He leaves Kaya with a card in hand or not able to spend the guild or die. Uh, or I wonder what Kyle would leave in hand. That's that's an interesting question. Maybe, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what Kyle would leave in hand. Maybe a golden veil for round two. Make sure he gets advantage round two to protect himself against sword. Um, maybe he was trying to go with a strong call to action play with his swordsman. Yeah, that's a mystery. Um, maybe he just had the call to action option um round one i don't know man what a what a very close round one decks are pretty close to even kai does get um does take a little bit more damage but he's left with a card of his choice after round one which i'm not exactly sure what it was um that roll for Kaya is really rough, but Jesse's not much better. Starting with the safe play of Bear, matting his Grave Knight. Those are both his knights, right? He does have like the the um, mini knights and the crystal archers, but those are both his knights. I guess I was definitely wrong on the call of starting Wing Linus. Um, Wing Linus plus his Fate Reflection is a pretty cool combo coming out round, round one. Um, I didn't consider the Fate Reflection. I was thinking Griffin would be better because it does do a little bit more damage on Ender the Fray. But that was a, that was a pretty cool combo that um, Jesse planned out there. And we got Frostback Bear staring at each other at the beginning of round two after the very close round one. Jesse did set spend the ceremonial there. Um, 
which does telegraph that he didn't likely doesn't have Fester in hand. Um, he probably I don't know if he's gonna spend another basic this round. He'll probably spend another basic this round on the anyway. Um, if I'm him, um, something I would like to do is try to telegraph that information as late as possible. If you have another basic outlier, right? If you have another basic in your hand that you could spend, um, spend the one ofs later in the round rather than earlier, so you're not really telegraphing your. Um, it doesn't might not matter this much anyway, since he's some of the wing line is immediately afterwards, and it got hit with a one of ice trap. He does lose a dice on that ice trap trade, but it does mean his crystal archers are in a decent spot. Um. Outside of under the fray. Three fate reflection for Jesse. He's really going to make this mirror match. A little bit better in his favor. We talked about a lot of different mirror matches. Him being able to block terrifying. Well. Um, Kaya being able to. Be able to kneel and come out of a kneel better. You know a bunch of different things we talked about. We did not talk about the efficiency of fate reflection against under the fray, which is something we definitely missed there. Oh man, Jesse slapping a massive growth on his bear. Slight, pretty big risk there. Does it? Um, Kai only has one sword in the um, discard. Jesse doesn't run Golden Veil. I mean, that seems like a big risk, and he's down to three dice while. Kaya has seven. I have a feeling that after this game, Jesse's going to talk about how awkward this round um, two hand is because that looks like a desperation type awkward round two hand play. Oh man. Um, Kaya attaching a divine to the bear. The opposing bear, Jesse's bear already has one damage on it. Um, I'm not exactly sure what that does. Right, the Kaya's bear can already kill Jesse's bear. Does Kaya have redirect? He's really taking an aggressive swing here. Oh, the, um, yeah, that's an aggressive swing by Kaya. And Jesse answers right back with six damage, right? Ah, the call to action. Call to action is going to get double use out of this. Divine buffed bear. So that divine buff and the call to action card is equaling out this about the same damage that um Jesse's getting with his massive growth swing. So they're really just gonna trade hits here, um no regard for the life, and just do some swinging with Kaya still up about two dice to Jesse's. Um, three, so Kai has five, Jesse has three. A very strong call to action that really made a confusing play a lot less confusing. Yeah, swing him right back to the three. We got Kaya at 10 life, Jesse at 12. Um, both the ready spells are exhausted. Um, both Phoenix Born are unexhausted. Um, Kaya has two extra dice. So this um game is still coming out pretty even, except that two dice differential to the two life differential. Kaya meditates his first Golden Veil. Still has two in the deck. Um, still having three call to action in the deck, so he could really get an explosive um, way to close it. So this two differential in life isn't huge. Ooh, Jesse unexhausting his massive growth bear. Um, big play there. Really big play there. Um, Kaya, it, I think he likely doesn't have a sword of virtue, or else he would have played it immediately when he. Threw on the massive growth. Um, any two life unit is going to get into the frayed. Hydra won't do anything here. This is a big, big um, refresh. 
But it, <laughs> but Kaya throws an adrenaline rush, dealing one damage to the bear. They're really gonna just trade haymaker makers here. Um, maybe maybe Kaya is gonna be okay. Um, trading bears, but the that adrenaline rush does put one damage on the bear, such so that enter the fray can finish it off. So if Kaya doesn't swing with the bear here, he is going to um lose two dice while only getting two damage on while losing the bear. It's um seems like a desperation play. Seems like just trying to squeak through an extra three damage. He passed. So he passed his main and ended afraid dealt three dealt the two damage, the finishing blow, while doing three damage to Jesse. Kaya says, well, this is this is really going in Jesse's favor here. That sword was huge. I think we're going to talk about the awkward hands on both sides in round two. Um, yeah, so these are these are some awkward hands, but I think Jesse's making way better use of it. Um, so much on exhaustion. That's the trick with it, including we talked about office on exhaustion at the end of the round, but the issue with including so much on exhaustion in a deck is that um, if you're even or a little behind, you're really in a tough spot. All right. Kaya starts this round um, down to four life. I, th I think he has to throw out a bear here. Um, that's his only unit with two attack. Right, unless he has a second Sonic, so he has to throw a bear or Sonic. He has to throw some unit out here because Jesse still has a molten gold in his deck. Um, and I would, yeah, and molten gold can finish it. So Je he does throw a bear out, going back to Jesse. We'll see how this goes. Meditating. A Neil and a Nature's Wrath, and well, two Nature's Wraths, um, for a couple dice here. He's got two Charm Power and a Nature Power. Meditation at the end of the round, at the end of the game, when you're down to four life, doesn't really mean a whole lot. Um, he's showing Charm Power, so he likely has Golden Veil. The chances are high. Um, he only has one in the discard, meaning there's two out of the ten left over. He has a good chance of having Golden Veil in his hand. That's um, putting Jesse in a rough spot if he wants to use Faster or Sword of Virtue. Um, if he drew both, he could just keep on, he just could force out the Golden Veil. If he, if Kai has both, two Golden Veils, and that's rough, but a plan is he could try to force out one Golden Veil, hope he doesn't have a second, swing and get a Molten Golden. Um, or do this. Attack the bear with bear. I don't think attacking the bear is a good call here. The reason for this is um, if you want to deal damage to the bear, right? It, it puts Kaya in a good position to um, preserve his life and get a use out of the bear. See, he didn't counter. If you're okay with dealing damage to the bear or dealing damage to the Phoenixborn, which he's totally okay with both situations, you should attack the Phoenixborn in that case. Because that would force the bear to counter, and then you um you don't have to deal with the back the bear attacking back. That is unless um Jesse has a sword of virtue and he doesn't want the counter. Um but regardless, you're still putting that choice in the hands of Kaya instead of the hands of himself. Kaya slims down a Shining Hydra. I wonder if Kaya is going to um, going to have to start buffing this Hydra. If, if, once, I mean, we'll see if he can unexhaust a bear, but buffing this Hydra might be a, um, a priority. Might also be one of the ways he could start coming back and winning. Because when you're this low on life, um, slightly ahead or at best, or at worst even, at best slightly ahead on the board, and behind on dice, you're in a bit of a desperation spot. 
you you gotta um, make some kind of decent play. Wing line is good at the end of this round here because I mean Kaya can't afford to end her fray. So Kaya's ability is pretty much shut off. Um, Lightbringer's placed down. I wonder what he held at the end of the round one, unless I'm misremembering things. Because if he was holding something at round one, it makes sense just to have the Lightbringer book in play at least, and then you get to draw an extra card either way. Um, but I might be misremembering. Alrighty, let's see. Um, looks like Genesis is using into the fray. No, I don't know. Yeah, um, does he use an end of fray to deal two damage to the Hydra? I don't get that play. He's gonna heal one. If you're gonna use end of the fray to deal two damage to the Hydra, you have to at least meditate up to a power nature. So you go attack it with a wing Linus and then trade. That seems like a weird play. I'm interested in this plan. That that I don't get that play. Hmm. Maybe he's gonna divine buff. No, he doesn't have a divine power up. Yeah. So I would say at worst, like you would have to met up to nature or divine power to. Trade it with the Linus after he removed one. Um, we'll see. Wait, I mean, if you even it would have to be a divine power because he could go and avail the uh, nature buff, the nature um power. Yeah, that that's not Fester. Yeah, Fester makes sense, but he has golden veil, or he has two charm power showing. Right, because then if he golden veils a fester, they trade even on dice, and then he's gonna remove the last wound, and then have two free heads. And yeah, I'm not I'm not seeing the plan here. Um we'll see. Sword of virtue. Yeah, sword of virtue. What do you what do you target? Yeah, I, I'm I'm a little perplexed. <laughs> Kaya, with this with the trash talk, is it a good plan? Yeah, I don't get it. Um, yeah. So now he's meeting up to a nature power. I think he is. I think he's trying to force out these golden veils. He's going to attack and nature power, but he's late on it. Right, because he can remove the second wound here. He, he's really late on that play. Um. So yeah, if that's what he's trying to do, he's late on it. And if that's not what he's trying to do, I don't. I don't get it. But I, maybe I should stop um, persisting on that play. He also exhausted his ability and took a damage there. So I don't know. I I don't get it. I think he was just trying to out. I think he was just outsmarting himself here. I, oh man, I I hope he's not. I think these both these players are great players and they're awesome guys. But I'm kind of rooting for Jesse here so he doesn't like, um, getting like hurt and beat himself up too much for that play later later on. But we'll we'll see. Um, on the bright side, Jesse still ahead on life, still ahead on dice, um, still put Oda in a position where she cannot use her ability, um, because Molen Gold will just win it, um, still has a bear book to activate. I mean, he's in a good spot. He's he's in a good spot. He's still probably favored to win. Um, 
but he's not in the at the point where he it was he was um really pulling away. He was really pulling away earlier. Now he's just a little favored. Yeah, Gilder buffing that up even more. Yeah, this is rough. He's not all that <laughs> no. Um, three dice to three dice. Not the best ice trap in the world. He doesn't have a second. I um Golden Veil. Vale. Okay, so the plan worked. That was actually that might have been a genius play. <laughs> he he forced him to spend his Golden Veil vale dice. Um, a a few actions. His na- so he spent all of his nature are gone. Yeah, maybe that was just a genius play that I'm that I'm double questioning. But man, if that was the second Golden Veil, vale, he was in some big trouble. Um, I was a hundred percent sure he had two Golden Veil vale in hand. Um, eh, but maybe he just played some 4D chess there and then just use spent him, made him waste his gilder and everything else. If so, that's awesome. I'm a little, I'm probably gonna look back on this and, and think of how much of an idiot I am for all these comments when that was might have been the best play. Very weird play, but possibly the best play. The um, only one to the light burner. It's probably going to finish off the bear here, and will likely win at the top of the round. I don't like dealing one to the light burner there. Um, well, makes more sense now when he has crystal archer in hand. But he could have summoned a bear, so. But yeah, it makes a lot more sense now that he's Quister Archer. <laughs> nice play. Nice play. Charm. Buff or debuffing the Crystal Archer and then using Enter the Fray. Would have took the same amount of damage either way, right? One to one. But Odette just won the game for Jesse. The bear with the divine buff swung for the win. That was I, I, I wanna talk about Jesse's plan of that um hydro because it might have been absolutely genius if he was making him waste all of his resources. Um <laughs> but that was that was kinda crazy. That was a really crazy game. Um Yeah, the line between genius and lunacy, a hundred percent. Um that that was that was pretty crazy. I'm not sure how much that he planned, but if he, but like wasting the gilder and um, the nature die for the gilder to do that is is pretty cool. Um, that second golden veil would have been lights, maybe not lights out. He was ahead either way, so maybe he was just trying to be a crowd pleaser and risking some stuff. But that 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 second golden veil would have been really rough. Um, he does have three golden veils, right? yeah. So. Not something I would have done, um, but that's some high risk, high rewards, may it possibly genius level play. But way to go, Jesse! Good job on the win. Thanks. How you doing, man? You back here? <laughs> yeah, I'm back. I just got back. So, so I was calling you an idiot for like ten minutes for that hydro play, and then yeah. I'm like eating my words here because you make them waste these resources, <clears throat> and then you hit them with a second sword, right? If he had a second golden veil, you I just, lose. You, yeah, that you just take that out. <laughs> yeah, so I, I just lose. <laughs> are you just are you just banking on him? Just like, hey, right, let me buff up this thing real like quick. You know, is that what you're doing there? Because I'm, I'm I, was, I was a little perplexed by that. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, the the I was what I was hoping, um, and and where I had made a, a simple mistake was I forgot to meditate after I did the enter the fray. Because even that's, if he heals one, better. yeah, even if he heals like, one, then I have the, the lioness attack in the, yeah. Divine yeah. power, then you just buff and kill it. But and, you and didn't, he, and I was like, I was yeah. so lost. I actually had two lines there. I could have meditated to divine power, or uh, but I needed to save a divine dice for that late crystal archer. So I was like, okay, well, I'll, I I should have meditated a nature die. Um, and then I had it on like nature ping and attack. And if he golden veiled the nature ping to save it, then my first sword kills it. And I, once I didn't do that, I'm like, well, I guess I'm just all in on the double sword play now. 
<laughs> so, because um, I, I made a mistake. Go. So, yeah, yeah. and I was like, yeah, if he has, if he has yeah. that gold avail, I lose. So that's just what's going to happen here. <laughs> so, yeah. um, but I, I didn't Weird think he had it. I think he had call to action instead. So I didn't want to attack yet and, and give him that window to get a CTA. So I, I just basically. exhausted. Yeah. So there was no call to action play. Not yet. But, yeah. So I was telling that, I was telling or commentating. I'm like, okay, so he enters the fray. Weird move, but he has to meditate on. And he didn't. Right. I'm like, okay. Yeah. So it I, makes sense that you just forgot to do that. Yeah, I just um, I just hit the pass turn. I'm like, oh, I wasn't supposed to do that. <laughs> the other minor thing, and well, very well played, man. Um, awesome first five. That that fate reflection combo with the um wing Linus was a pretty cool play. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you, it's you, super good. Yeah, it could, I mean you you counter his end of the fray. You, you deal two damage, and then you can't, you know, you can't guard the Linus, and you can't, you know, go right. and veil the Linus. So, you know, you're you're at a good spot once that happened. That was a pretty yeah. good first time. I, I've um, been really on the... So I, I ideally wanted to use um, the two shadows on the swordsman, um, and then... Because obviously I'd be more efficient. I'd have taken three damage, but I would have rather have taken three from the swordsman. But he just he just entered the fray on the the lioness so quickly that it kind of forced my hand there to play it that way instead and lose the lioness on exchange. So I exchange like a like a card and a half and three dice to his one card three dice. So it's not super efficient, but it was no, it was. I mean, you won there, right? Yeah, you, yeah. You, you if you pay an extra half card, like only a half card, to deal two damage and exhaust an ability. Yeah. You're winning. Yeah, so that's the way I, I felt. I, I would take that every time. Um, that that seemed like it seemed like a very risky play on him to enter the fray that early. I was I was kind of shocked. Yeah, I wasn't really in a great position, but I thought the lioness would either do one or two things. He either started the ice trap and he bait he would kill my lioness on ice trap, and I'd get rid of the ice trap out of his deck because he had one one x ice trap in his deck, or uh, which would allow me to to um, you know to play the rest of my hand out, but. The um, the bear, like, I don't traditionally start bear. I usually start griffin, but it felt really bad to start griffin with a 1x ice trap risk. You know, like, I just don't get that unit no, at all. I, that makes sense. Because I, I, I didn't put you on Linus. I put you on um, bear, griffin, and then some other three cars. I yeah. Think, I just really like oh. Linus and Odette. It's, it pairs but, nicely with Enter the Fray. Yeah, um, so... I, I didn't think Linus was a good call until I saw that, that fate reflection start. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, it makes sense because then you get to finish it off. Yeah. Um, yeah. I knew I he was going to start a swordsman because he couldn't start. He couldn't obviously start massive growth or Hydra. So I don't think he, I don't. Yeah. So I, maybe that's an issue with Kai's deck is his, when I was looking at his first five, it seemed kind of obvious. Yeah. I was really worried about him having a golden veil in that first five. So I knew I couldn't just start sword to remove knight like i knew that wasn't going to be a thing so i like at best knew my sword would be an untap of my own unit um <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I, yeah i i don't know did, did you meditate a golden veil from hand i didn't see that um yeah i i my enter the fray killed um, you meditated a golden veil from hand and then having a bear my bear died i didn't i, I think I, your bear I, I died to that. uh to the wing lioness attack right um in the last round there because i traded my lioness into your bear at that point those um those back and forth swings of six damage from you know divine buff bear and massive growth bear was pretty cool yeah yeah i was like, like well i guess we're just gonna both trade a bunch of damage here there's just we're just gonna be ships passing in the night here but my my ship's bigger than his ship right now so it's okay <laughs> so um, the oh, um, i was supposed to block your massive bear yeah yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I I, uh, I needed. I mean, that was a risk play, but I I figure if I pressure Golden Veil there too, I'm like okay with making that. Like my my massive growth bear just kill your massive growth your non massive growth bear. That would you know I'm I'm okay with that. I but obviously going bear into that last round, Kylo was just a huge oh yeah uh, yeah upswing so for me. I I saw I didn't see you meditate. Yeah, I know what you're talking about with the um. I didn't roast you per se, but. I, I did talk about Kaya being in a bad position once he played Adrenaline Rock. And yeah. I don't think all you meditate Golden Veil from him, which, I mean, that would have been a different thing. Yeah. Um, I probably would have roasted you for that. But um, <laughs> when you played Adrenaline Rush uh, and it put the one damage on, 
I was like, okay, so he has to swing with this bear now. Right. Because if he doesn't, then um, he just takes it from any of the fray. Yeah, I thought I was going to take nine. I thought I was going to go into this round at 13. That's what I thought because was going to happen. If you, yeah, because if you swing with the bear there, he can't block with his Master Growth Bear because that's crazy. Right. So he, he has the option of killing it with his Odette, which means he takes a third source of three damage. Right. Which is, he's probably going to do that anyways because he would rather have the bear gone. Yeah, I, I was um, happy to trade like fourteen to nine there. Essentially, as so it was. that was the comment I made on adrenaline rush play. I must have missed a golden veil meditate. But I missed it too. I didn't see you had meditated a golden veil that way. I made a comment about that one damage putting you in a rough position, but yeah. I don't know. It looked like both of you guys had a really awkward round two draw. My round two draw was awful. <laughs> yeah, it, it was so bad. It was I was like, seeing that from you. I'm like, man, you're you're spending a lot of dice on some weird stuff, and I saw and I've seen Kaya spend like down to like seven dice and you just spend some start spending it on a bunch of like weird on i just kept waiting for kyla to drop a late round hydra in round two and when he didn't do it i knew i was probably in a good yeah spot. so i think that kind of made it even that you both had horrible draws because it looked yeah. like that yeah no i i um i had a nature's wrath uh that i had yeah, drawn two, two ice traps yeah. i drew two ice traps a nature's wrath and the massive growth and and i think I don't really remember what the other one was now. Maybe it was a sword. I did draw a sword. I think that was the only like card I really looked at in my hand and went like, well, this is super usable. Uh, I, Ice Trap felt pretty good just because of the Gilder, to be able to keep the Gilders out of, out of play for one die. You know, I'm, I'm still taking one there, but um, yeah, I, there, I, it was definitely not ideal draw in round two for me. There was a minor misplay that I think you made, if you will. Yeah, I'm, I'm all for that, yeah. So... And I kind of try to explain this to chat because I'm I'm currently writing an article on attack right Phoenix born or units or whatever. Right. When you attack the bear with your bear, I thought that was a really bad attack because, um, y y what you want to do right is you you base I think you're, and I don't want to go in your head, but I think what you're what you want to do is okay either force his bear to counter or do two damage. Right. But attacking his bear doesn't do that. Um, attacking the Phoenix Born does that because when he blocks, he would have to counter. Yeah. No, so, I, I kind of I thought about both lines there. I just was a little worried that like because he has more untaps than me, and I was still worried about a Hydra coming into play that round, and it did. That um, I kind of wanted to see how much he valued keeping the bear up, even at one life. You know what I mean? Like, because one life is such a risky place for the bear to live. Um, I think you see that either way. Yeah. Um, and I, I get it. The, the, that attack makes more sense when he has a higher value, more life. So you could either, because you could force the guard, right? Right. Because here, here's, the thing is, he makes a decision either way. Right. So he makes a decision whether he would counter um, or not counter. But Well, um, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. In hindsight, like, I, I agree that, you know, using my free bear, I probably should just force the exhaustion or him take two and be in a really... A place where he can't actually enter the fray anything because he's down to two life remaining, um, right? And 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 that uh, that that's probably true. So the the other thought I had was like, if he trades into my bear here, I actually have two swords, so I can untap bear again. You know what I mean? Like I can I can untap my bear and fully heal it. Um, that was that was some of the thought process was like I may not need both of these swords on his units, and so if I don't need that, then. Um, no, I no, could get there, I, but I, you're I, you're absolutely right. Like I was looking at his discard pile after I made but, the play, and I was like, oh, well, he's he could very yeah, likely have yeah. two. No, I, I get your thinking. Um, yeah, but like it, it does think same things either way. And in one scenario, like one way you could have done it, you would have some slightly, like, and um, and I get he is unexhaust, but like he still has to spend resources for right. it. Yeah. So you could have put him in a position where he had to be slightly more behind and spend slightly more. Yeah. For I, this Totally possible at all. And he couldn't adrenaline rush the bear. He would have had no, to have a call to action at that point. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's a it's a very good point. I appreciate that um that line of thinking because that that you're you're hundred percent right. That would be um it'd just be a better line to take. Right. So that's usually what I do when I attack. Like I think of, hey, you know, I'm putting them in a position to guard or take um damage. Take damage right. But like what position would cost them more? Like one way, like would the exhaustion cost them more, or would the guard cost? Them? Right, and that's usually the way I think. Yeah, um, but either way, you won, and you played um, a great game. And the first five was excellent. 
So, yeah, I've been I've been really enjoying this deck's flexibility in first five because the deck is so efficient that I can do a lot of different first fives depending on what I'm up against. And I mean, the fate reflections are here for for Odette and Aridel matchups, right? <laughs> like that's where I mean, there's other value too, crescendos and things like that because I am soft to crescendo with Bear and Cloud vs. Griffin. You know, those are all soft to crescendo plays, so you want to have fate reflections for those things. But um, I wasn't too far off on my prediction that Enter the Fray was going to deal a lot of damage to Odets. <laughs> this game. No, you're, you weren't. You're, that's not wrong. Yeah, yeah, there was going to be a lot of that, and it was a really grindy match. I mean, we came out around one dead even, other than I had two damage on his Phoenix Born, right? So um, he still he still was able to uh, fully control my board uh, in that process. So I mean, it's it's just the nature of the beast when you're you're essentially he, in the mirror. Did he have a card stranded round one? Uh, I think he had a golden. Did you have a golden veil stranded, Kyla? No, I don't remember if you were on. A, ended up on a first four there. It looks like he, maybe I missed him. I might have missed him play a card because I, I I was at I was looking at your list for a second to talk about the game, and then I might right. have missed him. Um, but I think I don't know. Was he? Did you only play a first four? I don't. Yeah, if he's still here, he can he can comment on that. I was curious if he did with the card with remaining one. If he didn't, then I might just miss something. I mean, it, Kyla is always, he always puts me on my back heel and has to really make me think. And, and whenever that happens, uh, there's a chance that I'm going to make some, some uh, significant misplays. So it's possible that, uh, you know. What time, um, what time does your stream end? I've always forgot. Uh, we've we got about 10 minutes left or so. We're still in, we're still in time on it. I'll have okay. to go back and look at the game and see what, uh, what he did there but um because i don't remember i i was trying to like puzzle out what his his first five was at the end there and uh i put him on a golden veil start but i think he had the golden veil start i didn't put him on a golden veil because no. i thought like, match up like this i would thought he would want the golden veils in his deck before later round yeah i mean you definitely want to try to protect that hydra right that's that's the most significant yeah that was you can build I thought once he threw a massive growth on or got a hydro up, he would definitely want as many golden bells as possible. But I wonder if he drew three because if he discarded, well, he didn't draw three because no, because he he didn't have the third one. Otherwise, he wouldn't have gotten blown up by the second sword. Right. So he he meditated that first golden veil away. That seems but, like a that 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 seems like his probably biggest misplay. There. So yeah. Not, so his first meditation for the game. And go back. I wonder what here. he valued his debt. What did he value in his deck so much more that he had meditated his golden veil? I don't know. That's, That's a good I, question. Good huh. question. I, I think Kyla's deck is extremely good. I think it's got no, a no. It's lot a good deck. Yeah. Like, wow. I'm just kind of. I'm. Just, I'm just nitpicking here. I think it was a very, very well played game. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to find where he meditated that veil away. Kyla meditated the Golden Veil from hand, and then his he did a bunch of passing, and his next play was Adrenaline Rush. Yeah, maybe I, I don't... I guess I don't get that play. Um, um, I don't know why... He, there has to be something he valued in his deck. Yeah, that, or something in hand there. Yeah, he that, said he screwed up because he forgot... To, he could, I could still kill a bear. He made that in chat. Um, and then meditated Seeds of Aggression from their hand, his hand at that point. Makes gotcha. sense he didn't have anything. So I think he must have valued that Seeds, thinking he could... Get value from the bear and then seed something with. But that like bear. you, you, you could keep it for next round. So right, you, you. I mean, well, I think if he see because he had a three attack bear, if he seeds my massive growth bear, my bear dies, his bear dies. But then there's no bears on the field going into the next round. And there's no reason to have an extra golden veil, right? Because you're gonna, right. You possibly because if you draw another two within your hand, it's horrible. Right. Yeah. Because three golden veils would feel pretty bad there. Right. Even even possibly two when there's nothing on board underneath. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. I, I mean, I was sense. I was kind of in that last round on on like before the final round. Like, do I take one to bring back either Grave Knight or Hammer Knight um, to pressure the board at, as a late round play? Because um, the Hammer Knight would fight that Hydra extremely well too. So I was I was or that Grave Knight would excuse me. So I was thinking I might grab the Grave Knight, force the Hydra to block the Grave Knight, and uh, uh, get there that way. But uh, ultimately, I ended up not needing it because of that. But oh, is it time? Did you did you accidentally put extra mana? What's that? 
Is the timer still 70 minutes? It looked like you guys were... You started oh, at- I think I started at 75. I might have put the wrong time in. Oh, no. I was just curious. Yeah, we finished really fast, though. <laughs> no, no, uh, no. I'm not. Yeah. Anything like that. I'm just, I was just curious. All right, man. Um, Anything else you want to talk about, do before... Um, no, I mean, I, I'm pretty... Um, pretty happy with uh obviously the result tonight i mean that's kind of always a thing um yeah we were we were looking up kyla like so what you value your hand to meditate you, um, the golden veil so did you med- so two questions um I'm, i kind of interrupted jesse i apologize oh you're good um did you have an extra card in round one like w- did you start a first four or was i like did i miss something And then the other one was, um, yeah. So I guess shadow. I, I guess I didn't miss it. I'm wondering what the last card was in. Yeah. Started going. Back. Okay. Um. Also, kind of curious. Um, did you meditate the golden veil because you were worried you were two or three golden veils for round for that last round and having that hand, or um, what was the reason behind meditating that? Because we were trying to figure that out. Not that we're trying to roast you. Yeah, I know you said just wondering what the the play pattern was that made you value the mid on the Golden Veil. Vale there, it feels like Golden Veil vale is my worst enemy in this match for sure. Neil and Golden Veil. Vale. It does, but yeah, Golden Veil vale seems rough. Um, you had seeds. seeds. Okay. So, did you not want to meditate from your deck for risk of hitting something over keeping the Golden Veil vale in hand, or did you just think I wasn't going to give you a Golden Veil vale opportunity? <laughs> You're too scared to lose your Neil Hydra, gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, so you value your, the Neil and Hydra uh, more than the Golden Veil. Vale. Yeah. And you, if you draw into three Golden Veils, that's a horrible hand. For sure. They're For close sure. there. I get it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's that was a tricky game to navigate, Kyle. I appreciate that. I, I, I didn't want to pair up against the untapped Hydras between you and Neil because uh, I think they're... Uh, I think you probably have a slight edge on me in most games. I just think it didn't go your way this time just because of uh, not getting to kneel me. And, um, you know, just I, I can create a lot of pressure for Golden Veil. Vale. That's one thing I, this deck does extremely well is create a lot of Golden Veil vale pressure. So, I mean, obviously Odette does that in general with Enter the Fray, right? Like, <laughs> Enter the Fray is just a bonkers ability to pressure Golden Veil vale because it can remove things that your opponent doesn't want removed. Um, and, and I've been extremely proactive in my testing with Odette where I'm just using her life as a resource. So I know I'm going to give up a ton of blood points, but I don't care. I just want to win games. And so, uh, I mean, I have entered the fray three, uh, three, one wishing wings. I've, I've done all kinds of crazy stuff. It's just all for me is valuing in a fray, whether or not I'm going to take damage from that thing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I assumed it would, uh, and I, but I, I didn't know if you had the Golden Veil vale when you didn't Golden Veil vale the Fate Reflection. I thought you would Golden Veil vale the Fate Reflection. That's what I thought you were going to do. Uh, so I, I had a, so, I mean, essentially that was my version of two removal, right? Like, but I was surprised you afraid my Lioness. Oh, I was expecting you to have an Ice Trap for me just because of the two life conjurations uh, plan. Like if I go Griffin, Lioness, you like, get me pretty good on an ice trap. So I was surprised you didn't start an ice trap on me. Um, but, and I know I'm going to face a ton of ice traps this season. Sword Sonic Veil, yeah. I, I've i been, uh, a lot of, like, a lot of my plan has been, like, Crystal Archer, Cloudburst Griffin, Hammer Knight, um, Lioness, and, like, uh, Two Shadows. Like, because it's cheaper than sword, so it, it gives me a lot more flexibility in my first five to have a one die removal versus, uh, um, you know, versus the two dice of the of the sword. But I mean, I've I've ran, I've also ran sword and two shadows in my first five if I felt the need for it. So <laughs> um, I just didn't feel like I was going to need it there. Yeah, I mean that's that's uh it's 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 huge, right? Like the butterfly is a reasonable uh book here as well for certain matchups. Like um you don't 
I mean, I don't think you get a lot of value out of Butterfly in round one other than protecting your life pool a little bit, but after round one, and with Odette you can because you can fray, take a little bit of damage, and then have a Butterfly Monk still to, to heal back some of that fray damage. So um, you can go Butterfly Monk really easily in an opening here. Uh, and I, I think I'm liking Butterfly Monk more and more in Odette over Gilder just because of the non-books tax component. It just gives you, it just opens up your first five so much. I've played a lot of Odette. <laughs> and my solutions in the past have been, instead of starting knights, would be like a Frostfang or something that's a kind of a quasi-knight, right? Because it's two dice, but Crystal Archer is just better than that now. So, um, you know, you get, a, you get a lot of value in these new colors for Odette, I think. So, yeah, it's been, it's been a fun deck to uh, explore different things. And I've just been choosing not to overthink my first fives until I get in the games. Because I think I can talk myself out of what is a good first five. <laughs> A lot <laughs> in these open lists, I can go like, "Oh, well, then he does this, and then I'm screwed." And then, like, well, if he does that, I'm going to be screwed anyway. So, like, I'm just going to go with my gut as to what the best first five is for a plan. And I mean, I looked at your deck a little bit because you know we had been talking about it before we ever started playing this tournament. And I, I almost like, I know Neil had talked to you about it, and I was like, I was this close to pulling the trigger and playing your deck because I was like, it's kind of the same thing that that I'm doing, but. um I guess I just wanted to go a little bit more. I felt more comfortable with the control oriented version of it instead of just the pure untapped bypass version. But I think you're going to win a lot of games because I think it's a. Uh, there's not a lot of decks that can deal with that bypass. Uh, it's it's really really good. I just I think I'm going to hop off. All right, man, Carl. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Man. I appreciate you spending the time with us and and commentating the game. And uh, we will uh, we'll be back next Tuesday with uh, more shuffle bus action. I think Neil's got his game on stream next Tuesday as well. So. Oh, by the way, I didn't ask you, uh, surgery go-go? Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It was just a minor, minor knee commentary. Uh, <laughs> commentary, clues talking. Uh, minor knee scope, so nothing major, just, uh, just a little bit of recovery time, and then I'll be back to normal in a few days. Thanks, I appreciate it. Um, but, yeah, thanks for having me on, Jesse. Yeah, um, we'll see you, Carl. Have a good night. Take care. Bye. So, yeah, Kyle, I'm, I'm really excited to watch your deck this season. Uh, I think... I think it's got a lot of legs. I mean, it's it for me, like, like I said, I just feel more comfortable with the control archetype of Odette than some of the just pure bypass swing archetypes and what that play pattern, those play patterns look like. So I want a little bit of that, but not a ton, obviously. Like, I mean, I have set up the Hydra combo in this deck and, and one on Massive Growth Hydra, uh, you know, and have a sword untap to win type plan. I mean, it can do that, but um, if... You know, I wanted to be more in control of the game, and so that's the reason for the five removal. Uh, and I wasn't even sure five removal was enough, to be honest. Like as I was playing it out in my head, I'm like, maybe I need that third two shadows in this deck. I don't, I don't know, but um, you know, I, it's it's been um, it's been really good in testing. I mean, I, I've been really pleased with it in testing, and um, the push books makes it hard for my opponent to know which books I'm going to open, whether that's Bear or whether that's Griffin, whether that's Lioness. I mean, because Lioness and Griffin cost the same, so I can open Bear and Lion Griffin. I can, I can open Bear, Griffin, Lioness uh, and still have, uh, at, that, at that point, still have three dice left. So, like, there's quite a lot there. Hey, Monk, you know, you're welcome, man. Uh, so I, there's, there's, yeah, it's an interesting, it's a, it's a good pressure deck at the end of the day. It can go aggro, it can go control, it can turtle up if it wants i mean there's a lot of different play lines for it so i've been able to be pretty flexible and that's what i think you want a control deck to do at its core is be flexible uh, but not knowing the meta makes it really hard to know if you made the right call on the right cards to control the game state but uh, so far i've been feeling pretty good about that and control decks need a big threat to win the game so hydra serves that purpose but all right well, we did make it to 8.30. I appreciate you all dealing with a Neilless stream tonight as he's not feeling very well. But um, Tabletop Royale rated us with 13 viewers. That's awesome, Tabletop Royale. I was gone when you did that. I appreciate that. Das Beats came in with a resub. Thanks for that. And then Antarctica Girl with a new follow. And uh, Koi Lote uh, with, um, with a follow as well. So I appreciate all of you. Uh, that's super awesome. Can't, can't thank you enough for that. Um, and then, yeah, we'll be back Tuesday night. Neil will be on stream Tuesday night. There's still room on Tuesday night for one more game. So if you want to get your blue alt art hammer nights, that's your opportunity to do it. Uh, obviously, there'll be more throughout the season, of course, but we'd love to have you on stream. 
uh, have an opportunity to showcase your deck and talk about your, your deck and your plays. And, um, you know, I think everybody loves it when we get good tournament games on the stream. So uh, if you're interested, talk to your opponent about it and try to arrange. We have that 630 slot available still on Tuesday. Both the 630 and 730 central slots are open on Thursday of next week for the last day of round one. And then we'll be uh, we'll be on to round two already. And it goes fast. So, um, But otherwise, uh, I hope you all have a great weekend. Uh, get some good Ashes games in this weekend. Spend some time with the family. And then we will see you all back here Tuesday of next week. Thank you so much. Take care. Have a good night.